Okay then. So um, um what's that message come up? Oh. Look, oh. What's what was gonna say? What's that? Oh for God's sake, I wanna talk, man. Is that a cock up? Oh no, wait a minute. Oh. Uh, uh, Put your right, hearing okay. aids in. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Any anyway, we're we're gonna get started, right? Mm. And uh I I, I um daddy Daddy Langford in Roger's eyes has decided that we're going to go into looking a little bit about more into roundhouses tonight. Now, I, I've made uh, pretty good progress with uh, my roundhouse. In fact, um, I need to put the flooring in next. Oh, walnuts. Floor's well, already there, isn't it? Hazelnuts. Hazelnuts. What's that got to do with the roundhouse? <laughs> what the roundhouse? What's that? <laughs> Flooring. <laughs> they use it oh, for everything. Oh God! And and just can you just shut up? All right. What are you talking about, Cal Ram Dams? What was it? Oh God! What are you all about, Ram Dam? <laughs> Ram <Ramad> <laughs> <laughs> well, What did you say? No, you what's, this, about it. what's any of this got to do with? Well, what? you said something just then. You got to do something in the Ram Dams or something. No, the roundhouse. Oh, for God's sake, please. For, yeah. Well, presuming you're not building it on water. Oh, you my should, God. You should, oh, really you should be able guys. to use clay. Look, look, look. Mm -hmm. i got to be honest with you. you got to be careful, Carl, you know. Oh, just please. You know what, right? Look, oh, I'm trying I... to let you know that we, we heard what you were saying this morning. We, we actually took it in. Yeah, but you know, I, I wish you hadn't now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, this is nothing got this nothing to do with um, Ramadan, all right? Okay. It's nothing to do with Ramadan or Ding Dong. Oh my, please. Oh, please remember don't. when we used to go to that chip shop and they had Ramadan, and and we were buying chips and fish, and and they were starving in the background. <laughs> <laughs> They got a nice chippy up with us, but it's sort of getting on there. <laughs> and you got you called the guy Ramadan, right? Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right, are you seeing oh. this image? Oh very nice. What's that? Talk about <laughs> you have uh, music on. No, no, oh no, oh, <laughs> that's a that's a reconstructed roundhouse in the Chilterns. Okay. Mm. Oh. Now, <clears throat> now one one of the things that we used to say about roundhouses uh, is is there was just a division of light and space um, and access, and obviously with the central fireplace and. One thing that archaeologists used to say uh, was that roundhouses themselves have a sense of left and right. So you might enter a roundhouse and you might go around the fire um, towards the left. Or if you entered the roundhouse, you might go around the fire towards the right. And one of the concepts that archaeologists used to think, and this is not something that I really bang into at this minute, is that um, when you're accessing a roundhouse, women would enter the roundhouse on the left, and men would enter the roundhouse on the right. But there's no real evidence for that at all. So the big question is, is why, why did our ancestors build houses that were round? Um, um, and why it still makes sense to build round structures today so it would be interesting to look at this from mm. from the perspective of continuing the tradition continuing the line continuing the idea and where we are with all of this my biggest criticism with reconstructed buildings is that they uh, they inevitably make reconstructed buildings in view of the tourists so i.e that lintel there um the, the threshold, the lintel, the space, the lintel itself looks too tall. 
and it should be a lot lower so you can keep a lot more heat inside this building. Now, the roundhouse that I'm actually building, um, I can do a little sketch of it if you if you will. Yeah. Or I can, or <laughs> if I was using the other device, I could actually show you some images. But what I what, one one thing one thing specifically that I'm going to show you with my roundhouse, if I do a little sketch, we'll come back onto this in a moment. Because this is the, the update with the roundhouse, isn't it? So we'll just sort of give you a little bit more. Um, we'll stop the video there. And we'll share um, a little bit of the design stuff for the roundhouse that, that I've been building. So it, it, it turns out that we've got, with, with my roundhouse, that um, we, we, we've, got, we've got a complete circle. Um, and we've got two sets of concentric circles within my roundhouse now it's raised off the ground and the problem is because because of the way it's been designed um it's it's about a meter and a half um that beam itself is a meter and a half off the ground um so you've got an array of steps now one of the one of the one of the design problems that we do have uh, is is about the entrance and access into the roundhouse. And one of the things one of the things that I'm I'm very much aware of is that the outside access has to be through a small door, which is which is going to be no more um, than about uh, a meter and a bit in height. So you've got to you've got to crouch down. But when you actually go up, you're walking full height up the steps, and you've got a normal door here. This is all about heat retention. And with a roundhouse, heat retention is key. Heat retention is everything. That, to me, before we go any further, is the reason why we build a roundhouse, is heat retention. Um, and the other thing as well with my roundhouse is that the what we've got around here, uh, we've got arrangement of meter tall panels. And then we're going to have lights coming in through um, windows um, along the um, along the um, eaves of the, the building, um, and then what we've got is a gradual camber to create a roof. The difference is with my roof is that um, it's it's built um, just on the top of a hill, so we can't have a tall roof, and that's oh. another thing. Our ancestors were very much aware of of building these structures in regards to the different landscapes and the different different conditions that they were building around houses. The other thing as well as I was I was briefly earlier on, I, I, I read through something earlier on and it remarked how to build a roundhouse. And I just thought you, you can't have a book to tell you how to build a roundhouse. It's just not possible. And the reason why I'm saying it's not possible, modern day terraced houses, well you, you've got a flat space. You can build a modern day terrace house anywhere, right? Well, for example, in my hometown, Barry, the, the houses that they're building in Barry look all the same, same, and they're particularly badly built. Um, but you can put a sort of a, a square, a rectangular building over there. It's got all the utilities in, you know, as long as it's level, you can stick it anywhere, right? Well, roundhouses were built on all different types of sites, conditions, um, aspects, hinterlands, landscapes, and that sort of coming into what we're talking about, the line and um, Bruegel's Harvester, and we're talking about Tim Ingold, and we're talking about the whole idea that things are different. N nothing in the past um, is the same as anything else. Everything's complica complicated, everything's complex. And this idea to sort of really simplify and say, oh, what, what, what we are going to do is we're going to say that women enter a building on the left and men enter a building on the right around a fireplace. That's that that can be said to be a nonsense. So it's that question is it's that question um, we we need to think on a wider scale what the roundhouses mean on a worldwide plane of understanding of what a roundhouse is. So. You know, typical British sort of roundhouse designs. Um, 
and something that is very much of, as an African design. But the two things that these have in common is the roof, the fact that they're circular, um, and this looks like um, you've got a lower threshold on this one. Mm -hmm. And this one, the Chilton Open Air Museum. Now, personally, personally, I don't believe that we need to have these really tall roofs. I really don't feel it's necessary. I, I really think that one of the things that we've got with reconstruct, one of the things that we've got wrong with reconstructions is is the roof. You, you don't, what, what you need with all that roof space, you don't need it, or were they using it? That's the big question. So the oldest forms of indigenous shelters were often round in shape. Now we see that in regards to the American Southwest or um, the likes of Arizona. And we look at the idea of the Mongolian yurt. We can even put in the typical North American teepee, as we used to see with the cowboy and Indian films in the 1950s and 60s. Um, the Greeks actually built circular structures. If you go to Delphi, it's circular, the temple's circular. Huh? What's all that about? So the big question is, is why did our ancestors choose to, choose to build round? Big, big question there, let's answer it. Because the Ovid shape, the Ovid shape, um, earth tree trunks, um, rounded stones off a beach, uh, eggs. So all, all of these things that our ancestors were seeing had a sense of a circular nature to them. And it's that sense of replication. So in other words, what you're doing is seeing something in front of you and you're sort of wanting to replicate it, whether it's the right or wrong, oh. the idea of the circle could be seen to be the right thing to do um, in an ancient context. And it could be seen to be the right thing to do today. Now, um, when I started building my roundhouse, which is four, which, which is the, um, the, the diameter is four and a half meters. So it's not a small structure. And it, it's turned out that it's used a lot more material than I wanted it to. However, that's because I had a different idea of roof space in my head. I, I thought um, maybe my roof space is going to be like this, but I don't need a roof space like this. The main thing with a roundhouse is you're able to stand in it. And that's exactly, that's exactly the thing with a Mongolian yurt. So if, if we if we sort of if we sort of go off this a minute and we actually type in a Mongolian yurt and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and also what shape is an uh, what shape is an igloo a circular. You know, yeah. you know, it, it might sound too obvious, right? But the one thing is, um, I wasn't going to show this image, but there there is a point to be made when we sort of go Mongolian yurt. Um, and we basically say um, the Mongolian yurt. Mm. There's, there's whole hang. So the thing is, right? There's not much roof space in the Mongolian yurt. There isn't much roof space in the Mongolian mm. yurt. They don't need a lot of roof space. And the reason why they don't need a lot of wind roof space is because they're in open areas and there's a lot of wind, and they need to be able to batten things down and i think i think what what the big question that we need to ask is have archaeologists ever questioned um the need to have roofs like this it, you know um you just need something to stand in and, and, you know when when modern houses for example square rectangular houses you, you don't have huge raised ceiling space it's um you know you come into lots of modern houses and um Six, six, um, um, six and a half, seven foot clearance um, from the ground, and that's all you need. Um, mo, mo, I, 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 you come into some houses today, and that's all they are, seven foot tall. So if you've got a person that's um, six and a half foot tall, they're, they're touching the, the ceiling, and with their more or less touching the ceiling with their head, and they're banging the light fittings. But, but, but the point of something to do with the smoke. Right now, now we, we we will look at that. We will think about that. But we, um, but then again, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna actually um, argue sort of 
okay, let, let's sort of look at this, right? <coughs> um, yeah, we'll do the smoke thing now, actually. One of the, this thing about something to do with the smoke, well, th this fails. The, the, the thing is, right, this whole design fails. And the reason why this design fails, I've told you before, is if you're walking directly into the building, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you've got a blanket in front of the door, if you've got a, a proper door or something, right? As soon as you open that, all the heat just goes out, right? The whole point of having um, a, a building uh, with a... Look at these. None of them are right. But mm -hmm. if we look at that one there, can you see how that works? Yeah. Now, there, there's my mate Ian, right, oh, on the right there. Yeah. Remember oh, yeah. Ian Daniel? Yeah. Hi, Ian. All right. Yeah. yeah, so there you go. This this is this is the double roundhouse at St. Fagan. So obviously, obviously what we've got is you've got a lower threshold in there. Mm. And you 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 might be able to think as you enter the building, you sort of your head drops down and it goes up, and then you're into a level of heat, right? A level of warmth. But right? the whole point is to keep the heat. And actually, the other thing as well is um, when I was a child, this is something that I learned early on when I was a child, right? When I was a child, one of the things that I learned was that when you go into old buildings, you, you had to sort of duck when you went in through the doorway. Mm. And you always used to be told the reason why um, the reason why the lintel's lower and the reason why you've got to duck down is so that the buildings retain heat. That's the whole point. That is the whole point. So having reconstructions where where the lintels are sort of just above head height doesn't do you any good. Um, and I've got to be honest with you, right? It's an okay design at St. Fagans. They may have got the door sort of okay, but it's still not it's still not um, low enough for me. Um, and look at the amount of timber that you would require to build that roof. Mm. And again, why do you need that roof? Because if you if you sort of look at that sort of reconstruction mm -hmm. there, obviously you know uh, it, it's there uh, touristy, right? So obviously <clears throat> the smoke goes up and creates a layer that floats in the air. Now what 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 we need to do if we go back to if, if we go back to doing a little bit of a sketch, okay? This is what we're going to do. We're going to go through a little sketch and we're just going to explain this fire scenario. OK, so, OK, so what, what we've got, we have um, we'll do a section. OK, um, we'll do the height of someone like that. Um, and we'll do a li little bit of a doorway. Right. And you've got a low lying roof space. OK, and it comes back down there. That person inevitably has to duck down, right? And then the person can stand full height inside the building. So when they go into the building, the heat level is going to be there, right? I, I know that's a bit all over the place, but the heat level is sort of going to, you know, you're going to, it's going to be warm. Your head's going to be warm, right? And in, in other words, there's going to be a level in the building that's always going to be warm because the threshold is lower. Right, the lintel is lower. Right. Unfortunately, if we if we if we look at it the other way round, right, then we get rid of that. If we look at it the other way round, let's try and do a little bit better better drawing here. Uh, if we do it the other way round, and we sort of have um, here we go. Let's do it, let's do it the other way, right? Uh, and what we'll do, we'll do a reconstruction and we'll do that. Right. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to have somebody who is basically that height and they just go into the building. Well, what is the need in all this roof space? It just makes no sense. And the other thing as well is if you've got the doorway, which is just above the height of the individual, you're going to lose all the heat anyway. What is the point in that space? There's no actual point in having a really tall raised roof. I've got, right. a I've got a theory there, Carl. Do you want to talk about it now or later? Yeah, let, let's let's do it now, Bill. Let, let's do it now while we, we're sketching. Right. Uh, we're, we're actually well away from, we're so far away from what I was meant to be doing. But, but Bill, yeah. this is useful. We'll, we'll go with, we'll, go on. Give, give right. us what, we've got this on here, Bill. So let's do a bit of a sketch. Go for it. I'm, I'm thinking they were built quite tall <clears throat> to get sufficient angle 
to ensure there's a good rainwater runoff in storm conditions, because there's only reed thatched, of course. And the, the, the lower the headroom, probably uh, the slower the water runoff will be, and that may cause leaking through. The other thing, the advantage of yeah, go on, that, actually, 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 Bill, that, that sounds very, very logical. It does sound yeah. logical. However, yeah. Yeah. however, um, having a tall camber roof means that it's going to be a lot more difficult to maintain. Um, and that, that is a downside. So you've got an upside there and you've got a downside. Go for it, Bill. Um, the, the, the bigger roof space, again, would allow you to hang up meats and things like this for smoking purposes. Of hanging things on practical reason, perhaps. But then, 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 then again, if we, then again, if we, yeah, I, I can, I can fully see where you're coming from. But yeah, but, but why? The, sorry, carry on. But no, Bill, Bill, we're gonna, we're gonna both do this. If we, if we have the roof, if we have the roof space a lot lower, you can still hang meats and stuff. You could, yeah, but you got, you got to balance that then with the runoff problem yeah, from storm conditions. That's what I'm thinking, you know. Yeah, and, and the other thing we've talked about this before, one little theory I've got why it's round, because ancient peoples, uh, even now, it, people don't like corners in dark buildings because they think maybe something bad lurks in there, maybe evil spirits, who knows? Yeah. I, I, actually, actually, that's a good point. But Bill, Bill, can I just um, can I just put something in the mix that I have experienced myself, right? I'm not going to dismiss anything that you've said. Are we? Are we looking at a limb image now? Are we? We're not. We're not. We're yeah, not. we're looking yeah, at your drawing. But okay, if we, if we, if we, if we, right there, there is one other reason, right? Oh, okay, yeah. if we, hang on, I, I've got a. I, this isn't a battle of wills at this minute. This is, you know, we're not, we're not having a row or anything. And um, hang on a minute. What? Hang on, I've just oh. done the wrong thing. Hang on. Just, just I, I think Carl's just making a roundhouse to suit, you know, modern day living or his living, really. And uh, actually, yeah, actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't build a big high roof like that if I was building it myself for my own personal use. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I haven't built it like that exactly. I, no. I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. But can I, can I just say one thing? Can I say one thing? In storm conditions, right? That's just going to go. That's just going to be finished. You know that that's not going to last. That just will not last in storm conditions. It will not. You know, I, I've been, um, I, I've been in the, I, I've been in stormy conditions in West Wales, right? If you've got anything that's too tall, right, mm. it'll just, it'll just blow away. The wind, the wind will rip the whole roof off. That's built in a woodland, right? But lots of people then, because they're up in upland areas, and those are some of the first areas that trees are felled, right? So some of these, these, these roofs would not last. And that, and Anne's right, it, it's built for a, a, a modern situation, a modern condition. However, with a roof this tall, it's just not going to last. I know it. I've seen it. Yeah. You know? As Bill said, though, you've got to think of drainage. And the point is, Carl, is that yeah, these it. designs and heights, we don't really know. How can you guess what they have? It's nothing to uh, relate to, say how high they'd be or anything, apart from what we think about weather and all that, is it? The, 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 only, no the only thing group. that we have, Roger, the only thing that we have to, to estimate the height of the roofs, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in all timber building, because the, this is cob, uh, you know, you've got examples of cob building with earth, earthen yeah. walls. And you've got examples of stone buildings, so it's difficult to work out the load and thrust. But if you've if you've got um, completely timber buildings where the load and thrust is displaced into the ground, then you can get an idea of the timbers um, and, and and the weights and the heights of the timbers being used. Um, yes, and the angle back you, you, if they went to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. You, actually, actually, the big debate comes in right if we um, the big debate comes in. And and what I'm going to do now um, is oh. I'm going to go. I'm going to show you something else, right? The archaeologists working at the at the site of Hoyk had exactly the same problem that we're discussing now, right? And they did two separate reconstructions. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you the two reconstructions at Hoyk. Uh, one has a tall roof; the other one doesn't. So they 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 experimented with both. Right, so um, mm. hang on a minute. Let's let's just try and find the other one. The other one is uh, oh god, hang on a minute. 
What? Right there. Where? That's the one reconstruction. Oh. It's mm. got, not got a massively tall roof, right? Mm. That's right. the one reconstruction. And then the other reconstruction is this. Mm. Now that is very tall. Yeah. What you can see there is that there's already slippage because they're, they're saying that this was... Um, I, yeah, I understand what Bill's saying about the water runoff. I can completely agree with what he's saying, right? Mm. However, th these, <laughs> these, this is actually a, uh, this is actually cladded with sods of earth. Huh. So obviously, if you've got if you've got an apex like that, the sods of earth are just going to start to come down. Are just going to mm. start to slip, right? Just... And that is the problem with a tall apex building, as opposed to something like this, which that, that, which you could retainers or something. Yeah, well, you could have retainers, but, but what's going to happen is you can already see there that it's it's already gone. It's already eroded away. Mm. This is the reconstruction here. And I don't know how this is fed, but this to me is a far better design because the roof space is, is limited um, and it's not as tall. And something like this would last at very heavy stormy conditions where, in fact, that wouldn't. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. oh, God. <clears throat> So you can you can see you can see you can see where we're going with all of this, mm. and you can sort of understand what what we are saying. Hang on a minute, mm. that's not what I wanted because that's the other piece. Hang on a minute. What's that? That's the other piece we're going to look at. Mm. So mm. obviously, what we what we've got, and and again, um, Bill said obviously it's space for smoking and preserving meats and fish well how the hell are you going to get them up into this space anyway you know it's too it's too high up why do you need it as high up just have Obviously, a cross beam. just have a cross beam yeah just have a cross beam but you don't need to have it as high up you really no, don't need it no. to have it as high up now this is the point i'm trying to make i'm not i'm not trying to talk down to anyone i'm trying to lecture people and say mm -hmm. this is the way it is but but certainly the big failure there is is the height of the doorway <laughs> You know, it, it 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 doesn't it doesn't stand up. Now I've been in um, wow. I, I've been in a few roundhouses, and the ones that have a lower doorway, they're they're warmer. The ones that have a higher doorway, there's no warmth there in them at all. So they could add a double entrance. Nothing. You could have a double entrance. Yes, well, as no, as, as I'm doing, as, as I'm porch, doing a double a entrance. So so you, so you have a low lintel on the outside, mm -hmm. um, and you have a high. Um, lintel on the inside, yeah, maybe. possibly. Um, so, uh, in other I, words, what hang on, yeah, go on quickly. I just remember the Grubenhausen's, you know, <clears throat> and I thought that was sunken floor. Oh, well, yeah, yeah carry on. Sunken. I said sunken floor, yeah, the Grubenhausen's are sunken floor, yeah, go on. Grubenhausen's, uh, you know, so, so they, they were like that, that was something that. You know, had a smaller entrance so that yes. it was warmer. But of course, it yes. was underground, wasn't it? It was part of it was underground. I don't well, know. Like, I don't know how yes. successful they were, but they were quite a. There was a quite a peak on on them, but they yeah, were, in the Anglo-Saxon period, yes. Yeah, but they were like, and then they went on to build in square. You know, so I don't know where where uh, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know why they started building round ones. Well, it's easy to map, map out with a spring from it. You know, and that was that was equal before. Equal on, the, equal on the fire. Yeah. So but, anyway, folks, let, let's just sorry. let's just crack on. Uh, now, this, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. That's a porch, a first porch. <laughs> the last time we like I, it with a thing. I, I tell you what, how can that be justified? The porch is almost as big as a bloody building. I know. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh now, come on, flipping egg. <laughs> oh, no. I tell, I tell you what, some of these, some of these reconstructions are just so bizarre. Um, mm. I think, I think that's a Castor Than lease, isn't it? Where, yes. where you've got these yeah. tall yes. buildings. It is, yeah. Where's that? Castor Than in West Wales. Yeah. Castor Than lease. North of Cardigan. Cast death, mm. yes, exactly. Oh, Cast death, oh. yes. Cast death, yes. The, the, uh, yes. Um, so when we're thinking about the circular design, 
And as usual, Mother Nature knows best. There is some nifty natural science that makes round buildings more comfortable, more energy efficient and safer, especially if you combine the ancient shape with modern materials is exactly what I've done. Mm. So now <laughs> this is... Um, well. This next thing is everything that we've been talking about. Wind and tsunami waves move naturally around a round building rather than getting caught at and potentially ripping off corners. A rounded, a rounded roof um, avoids air planning, a situation where a strong wind lifts the roof structure up and off of the building. So in other words, a tall roof, you're going to get the problems of the roof being taken off by the wind. That's exactly what I've said. So the so when when we when we think about these these types of buildings, um, and we think about them from an ancient context, the the one thing that we can say um, is that they were very they they were very extensive with the use of their materials. So you know, a roundhouse a roundhouse you can use any material you like. You can you can use timber. You can use hides, you can use earth, you can use you can use um, cob walls, um, you can use stone, you can you can use anything you like in regards to um, constructing um, a, a roundhouse in the past. So the other thing as well is, um, you know, in in lots of ways, you could say. On the other point, that having the roof space might act as um, a, a temperature regulator. The one thing, the one thing overall that I'm seeing, um, which is which I don't feel is is correct, is lots of people building modern examples of roundhouses. What they do, they stick a um, they, they in the middle in the apex they have a low lying roof yeah that's fine that's what we're saying low lying roof and but what they do is they they put a light in it so basically you've got um fenestration uh you you've got light coming from a, above and it you know and, and you can see see up the problem is that gives a vulnerability to the roof um and this is why another reason why people didn't didn't need to have um, an open space in the middle of a roundhouse. One, it lets in the elements and the rain, right? It did, they didn't have them. It, it, it was an apex and it, it just raised and, and that was it, right? And, and any, any smoke made its way out uh, through the thatch itself. So we, we, could, we, could, we could say that um, we've got to be very careful when designing modern types of roundhouses as opposed to... Um, and ignoring what our ancestors told us. The acoustics are, and this is a very, really interesting one. So if we sort of move on a little bit further. Again, this is one of the old, old roundhouses at St. Fagans. The acoustics of round space uh, can be out of this world. You know, it, it's, I, I can remember there was a, a, a program years ago it was called Down to Earth. It, it was at, it was three time team. It was a series that came out in the 1980s, and uh, they they had some uh, some um, what you could call a baton de decor, which is basically they 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 say that these baton decors were were like a, a little uh, piece of antler, and you'd be able to chuck a spear while. They also think these baton decors, which which had like a circular thing in them, if you mount them on a piece of rope and swung them around a roundhouse, they made a really eerie sound. And they did lots of reconstructions of this. So the, the space itself, the, the 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 building itself, the curve the curve itself um, makes the sound distinctive, but it also softens the sounds inside the building. It makes them more appropriate to the ear making it the perfect space for rest and reflection or for socialization and listening and playing music. 
think long winter evenings of storytelling around the central fire. And the shape also prevents noise from penetrating in from the outside, which, which is a really interesting point. Really interesting point. Sound, sound waves dissipate as they wrap around the building, shielding the interior from loud outside noise. That's a really interesting one. That's a, that's a really, really interesting point. And if we sort of move on, and, and again, I'm sorry, I, I can't. I can't go with that. No. Um, <laughs> Don't like that. I, 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 sorry, I can't go with it. Can't. And it's, it's like. No, that, why? that I like. That, that, that's what I like. Well, yeah. you know, you like that. You like that, Bill. But l look at the roof space. It's, it's why do you need all that roof space? A water runoff in storm conditions. Okay. Yeah, I'm still with the water runoff in storm conditions, saving the water. That sounds really, really good. Um, but, of course but also, problem, so, yeah. whatever whatever you're going to need to do, whatever you're going to need to do is you're going to be able to have to make sure that the the apex material in the apex, whether it's um, thatch, whether it's turf, whether it's stone or whatever, it needs to be really well fastened in because the, it'll just all collapse otherwise. So our, our ancestors also understood understood around home quality that it is less measurable than the intelligent use of energy the clever space allocated and the powerful and natural movement of air and sound so all that's really important to do with these roundhouses for example yurts themselves yurts them, themselves could be described as circular living places that provide a balance of looking inward and outward Shelter. looking out of the natural environment and surrounding but then coming in again to the self and the half of the being living inside sort of yurts and roundhouses. So what I'd like to do next is, is another little piece that I've managed to track down. Um, and this, this is what we're gonna do. It, it, it's a little piece about experimental archeology span in regards to some of the, the building of these roundhouses. So if we go to No. St. Fagans. That, that is the old village at St. Fagans. That, that's that's the old one. So what I need to do is get my notes in here a minute. Um, hang on a minute. That's right. Hang on. I've, I've got I've got the wrong piece on my thing, my so I just need to put it on here. Um, I don't know where it's gone. Okay. Train. Um, hang on a minute, Rog. It's 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 all for the good of the country, as they say, Rog. Okay. So so again, this is some of the reconstructed <coughs> buildings um, at St. Fagans before they they they, um, they 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 naturally fell down and 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 so on, and and then you've got the new reconstructed village at St. Fagans. Sunwise, a real, a, a real around the roundhouse. Now, this this is a rather interesting piece, and I'm just going to read through this, and it's got a few weird little theories in it, and that's what we're going to do. So, one of the things, one of the things, it it this piece talks about alignment, and it's something that I don't really like to look at. But we're going to do it anyway. So we suspect that many tombs and monuments were aligned or mapped um, to the movement of aspects such as the sun and moon. Now, my my big argument with these is that, for example, when you go to Stonehenge, um, it, it's aligned on the modern day um, sunrise and sunset and the solstice. And you're thinking, well, everything's moved and changed around now so but anyway one thing that they they must have had a relationship with 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 sun and moon anyway today we are aware but today we are, we could say we're very sensible people and we talk about things like um 
uh, Feng Sui, um, Feng Sui, for example, a practice that was um, wild, what, wildly used to orientate buildings, including houses, in an auspicious manner. This is this is what they do in the likes of Japan. Now, again, thinking about this, depending on the particular style of Feng Shui being used, an auspicious site could be determined by reference to local features, such as bodies of water, stars, or a compass. Now, when we think about this, we think actually it makes these roundhouses a lot more complicated, but, con but connected to us than, than we can think. Archaeologists suspect the prehistoric houses were also carefully aligned and may be used in a prescribed manner and used in different ways in a prescribed manner. So we're, we're thinking of this whole sort of world. And, and what I'm not going to do is say, oh, you know, they, they, they sat down one day and they decided to align their doorway on, on the setting sun or, or, the, or the moon coming up or something. But obviously, each to their own. And people had different reasons why they did different things. So you may have, we've all seen reconstructions of Iron Age roundhouses. Um, and basically, in, in some of the examples at uh, Butter, uh, which is on the um, south coast, and a, a reconstructed village down there, um, and examples at St. Fagans, you might have the main timbers constructed, and you might have wattle and daub um, to create the walls. Um, and the wattle, um, as we know, is stitched together, willow and hazel and ash, um, or whatever wood, which is supple. supple. Yes, I've used ash. Um, and then, then you put these in frames, and then you, on the outside, you would actually use daub. Um, um, or you might use stone. So, again, this idea of the conical roof. These structures were common throughout Britain, I would say, from um, not just the Bronze Age, but um, you know, from the Mesolithic period. Yeah. But they were far from just simple dwellings to keep out the wind and rain. They were the focus around which most of prehistoric life must have centred. So these places were places that people lived for a long period of time. And in the winter months, when you think about it, if it gets dark at... Um, if it's getting dark at half past three um, and it's it's light at sort of um, half past seven, you don't have many hours of light in the day, do you? So these, these buildings themselves were, were key and probably have always been key, even as far back as Paleolithic times in Britain. There is little evidence for large communal halls, for example, or specialised housing at this time. So it was here, so the, in other words, these buildings were used for everything. They were used for sleeping, cooking food, entertaining guests, carrying out daily tasks, um, undertaking crafts, crafts, crafts. Um, and, and occasionally, when it was really bad outside, your cattle and, and your chickens would come inside as well. This is what we're also seeing. So in other words, these roundhouses were central, powerful places, dark places, often smelly places, not least from the smoke from the hearth, as there were no windows or smoke holes. So in other words, the smoke had to exit through a hole in the roof. Not that again. The smoke had to exit through the roof itself and not a hole in the roof. Mm -hmm. Hang on a minute. Oh. Okay. So you don't have holes in roofs. Um, the, the smoke would just exit through the thatch. M amazing. So again, sensual places, dark places. That gives you an idea of the scale, much bigger than anything I'm doing. Smelly places, not least from the smoke from the hearth, as there were no, no windows or smoke holes. Just repeating that to lead on to, these buildings were also filled with furniture, pottery, stored food, and the chattering voices of the people actually lived in these buildings. Now, this roundhouse in front of us is one that was actually excavated at Park Bryn Kegin um, at Landig Land Landigai on Anglesey by the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust, this one here. 
Um, and what what we're sort of starting to see is that they weren't restricted by well, the same restrictions I got. They, they, they were phenomenally powerful buildings. And obviously these buildings were taking some time to create. Archaeologists have recently realized that the use of space in these houses was closely controlled and managed. In the late 1990s, Alistair Oswald noted that the doorways of these later prehistoric houses tended to face east or south east towards the rising sun. Interesting. Also, um, also when intact floors, where intact floors have survived, uh, they're, they're really starting to see some comparisons with other sites, including sites such as Danebury, Maiden Castle and the Scottish Islands. And what, what, we, what we do find in these buildings is that not only do we find the hearths, but a lot of household rubbish. So right across Britain, um, consistent patterns of material uh, within these houses suggest an important thing that whatever you're thinking about the doorway, uh, in most cases, they're orientated to the east, they're coming up on the sun. The cooking area, they say, could have been anywhere in these buildings, but, but they're saying that maybe in earlier times, some of the cooking areas were in the southeast of the building. Obviously, you cannot afford to not be careful because you don't want to set, foot, set light to the roof. The working areas uh, are said to have been in the southwest and the sleeping area along the north side. All interesting stuff there. All interesting um, perspectives. So what we've got there... No. A typical, a typical sort of interpretation for um, a building um, from these ancient periods. Some archaeologists have argued that this layout was cosmological um, structuring, um, and it was associated with the sun and the passage of the sun. Um, and movement inside these buildings would have been clockwise. All right, fair enough. Let's just just move on from that one. But what you could think of. What you can think of in many ways is if it is, you can see that there. So that's that's the sunrise, right? And the sun is shining in there, um, and the light is actually shining on the back wall of the building. They're also saying so that's going to be the night time. Um, in in the daytime, you've got you've got storage against the north walls of these buildings, and weaving and grinding and potting on the south side. And you've got this sort of idea of, of movement, the, the, the idea of the circle. So the clockwise movement around the building. Movement around the houses may have represented a life cycle from birth to death. So you might enter in on the west and you might come out on the, on the right. There may have been a set pattern to what was going on. So finally, what we're gonna to say today Finally, what I'm going to say today is, if we if we go to there, right, what's going on? Hang on. Um, again, these sort of years, this sort of. Um, Again, if we if we sort sort of type in mesol mesolithic, oh. Oh, I just had it meso. Round houses. If I go back to there, you know, some of these, some of these are sort of got sensible designs. Now there, you can see there that obviously 
it, it's the pitch is coming in, the height's coming in, the doorway's still wrong, but the roof isn't isn't that tall on this one. Archaeologists suggest that this is th that um, if you're thinking that people moved within these buildings in a certain order, other archaeologists believe it's more about environmental conditions such as direct wind and and, and light intensity. And you know that's been sort of predominant with these buildings. In either case, it's clear that roundhouses were not simply huts, but sophisticated structures imbued with powerful sim symbolism that accompanied their construction and dwelling, and also telling us that the wonderful civilization of Egypt We've got so much to learn. And obviously, when, when we when we think of something like this, um, this, this, this whole sort of world of things that we can learn with with circular structures and um and everything um is is out there to sort of learn from and obviously we're we're, we're not getting things right when, when people reconstruct things um can can you clearly say that it's it's always right um and the answer is no um and we've got to be very careful on how um we we view the past um, and we've always got to have open eyes to take on other people's suggestions um, and other people's perspectives on how these roundhouses operated. So on that on that note, um, has anyone got any questions? Well, uh, <coughs> oh, I, hang on a minute. That's a nice little one, isn't it? Mm. Where you could you could live in there, Anne. Yeah. Like it could, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yurts. Can you cook in yurts? Yes. Oh, right. So you don't need a big height. You don't need a lot of height. No. Really? No. Um, and this is, this is a roundhouse that they've allowed to collapse. Mm -hmm. Because when you allow roundhouses to collapse, you get an idea of understanding what the archaeology uh, tells us with the clues in the ground so you can sort of work out why a buildings are collapsed and so on so when they, they just let roundhouses collapse and um, they did that with saint fagans and they learned quite a lot from mm. from what what the data was telling us at saint fagans um uh, right so um we're going to come off that now um and we're going to stop the share right anything else you want to say um and um, no. no, just, um, you know, <clears throat> I suppose I always thought roundhouses were built in, you know, Iron Age, but I suppose now we're, we're thinking they might be earlier. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Back to Mesolithic. Well, roundhouses being constructed in the Mesolithic period, and, and we've yeah. been finding them all over the place now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I know there's some um, round, <clears throat> there's a big... Um, Round house, round village, round house village on the coast of um, Antrim, and oh, it must have been really wild there. Um, you know, well, with it's, the winds it's, and everything. Exactly. Did they have tall roofs or low lying? No, roofs? no, no. They didn't have tall roofs. No. Well, in fact, I don't know if what they had because they were they only showed the round walls. You know. Yeah. Yeah. The round shape of the walls yeah so they hadn't really reconstructed them thanks so, thanks yeah. for that Anne. um okay uh what about you bill yeah i was thinking about uh, zulu roundhouses uh they're, oh, quite, yeah. so, they're quite sophisticated actually because yeah. they're not built like a teepee they're built like a half a sphere uh all interlaced inside very spacious inside yeah and the entrance is very very low uh, the theory um, is because yeah. of heat retention, also because they believe their ancestors lived in the the houses with them at the, the far end. So as you actually go into the uh, the house, you have to bow in any in any case for the low headroom, and in doing so, you were sort of acknowledging and worshiping your ancestors, the spirits of which lived with them. You know that sort of thing. Now uh, coming back to the traditional sort of um, roundhouse, of all the foundations uh, being exposed, well these. The, the holes, etc. Um, there's very few indicating that there was a central pillar in their car. Very, very, there we go. I thought that's the Zulu type, yeah. 
Um, so I, there have been some, but the vast majority didn't have any central uh, no. support, which they didn't need to, obviously, providing the, um, the sloping struts were, were robust enough. You didn't need that, no. But one or two did. So just speculating why. But we seem to be okay. adding, we, we, there's just so many variations, you know. We, we're still not quite uh, there for a definitive agreement as to exactly how they were built. Yeah, yeah. we don't have a definitive agreement. Exactly, exactly, Bill. So, uh, so, okay, yeah, no, I agree with all that, and uh, it's working quite well. So, uh, uh, anything you want to say, Steve? Um, just, a, just a couple of things. Firstly, and I apologise, I may have missed it, but um, we've talked about roof lines and size and shape, et cetera, et cetera. What was the, what was the flooring? Did they ever, is there any sense that there was ever a, any platform? I mean, we talk around about the engineering for the wooden roof. But is there anything not not quite a suspended floor, but a slightly raised floor? Because yeah. it's strange that sitting on the ground. Oh, well, 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 actually, actually, I can I can answer this now. Um, I, I can answer this straight away because um, what one one thing Anne mentioned the idea of the Grubenhausen. Basically, what you would have, um, you would have no. Actually, um, there's two types of Grubenhausens, right? Um, Ones that we've interpreted where um, you might go into a building and you might drop down, right? The other, the other way of interpretation of, of Gubernhausen was that there was actually planking above. Um, it, there was a, a suspended floor. Um, and, and then it, it, it was erased. It, it was actually um, a, a wooden floor. Mm. Right, this is what we feel, mm. and the other, the, the other, the other thing as well is the other thing as well is right. Um, living directly off a floor, right? Mm. It's damp. Mm. It gets very muddy, and it gets becomes very uh, dirty and whatever. But yeah. right? I, I didn't build. I, basically, my building, right? Um, th there's beams. I've, I've got, I've got beams that um, um, the the beam because it's on a slope. The beams at the back are basically about um, a foot off the ground, and the beams at the front are in in the region of um, four foot off four, four foot off the ground, right? right? So mine's got beams in it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing as well is one thing you're not going to be able to detect. Um, one thing you're not going to be able to detect is if you if you've got, for example, a structure. Um, and, and it's all made of wood. Who's to say that they didn't have a suspended floor anyway? Um, and then, then you could say, oh, well, how are they going to have a, a fire in a building with a suspended floor? Well, if you've got something sturdy in the middle and you line it with clay, then it's not going to burn through the floor. And, 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 and that's basically it. So, yeah, you know, it looks it, like they had fire pits, you know, in, in the... In in the Mesolithic ones, we've got fire pits, right? Yeah. But th then again, oh, right. th th then again, we don't know the rest of what the rest of the inside of the building looks like. No. This is the thing we don't know. No. no. Oh, right. Anyway, thanks for that. I hopefully I've answered your question there, Steve. If you haven't got anything else to say, yes, you have. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Okay. We will be doing this next week, and um, and finally, it's Roger. Roger, give us some. Give us some stuff. Well, I've actually asked my question earlier on about the height. Any evidence for what sort of heights they'd used? Different ages, maybe? Apart from having the poles at an angle under the ground, which would give you an idea of that. It, it, yeah, it, 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 it is about the thrust and of, of the poles into the ground. But also, yeah. if, if, the, if, if the diameter of the post holes is quite narrow, right? Then you can probably work out that the timbers ain't really ain't really much ain't really heftily load bearing, um, and therefore they're not having to carry a, a great deal of weight. And if they're not carrying a great deal of weight, then they don't come into an obscure apex in the middle, which would then yeah. mean that they carried a lot of weight. If they're not carrying a lot of weight, then they're not going to be that load bearing. So yeah. Hmm. So well, um, hopefully I've answered that, Rog. So yeah. We will be all year next week. So if Anne hasn't got anything to say and Steve and Bill and Roger. I won't be um, here next I, week, Carl. Okay, well, you, you, uh, yeah, we know, we know oh, you're yes. all here. Right. Go to York. Yep. 
Great. You, yeah. you've got, Bill's going to your... So, Steve, I will see you next Thursday, won't I? Uh, I'll yes, see you next but... Tuesday, Carl. Right, I'll see you on Tuesday, Roger. It's the first one in the month, so I can do that. I'll get the yeah, so, club, club night. So, I'll see you on Tuesday. Um, yeah. Steve, I'll see you on Thursday in the morning. Yeah, are, are you? Uh, is, is there a dial-in facility for the class on Wednesday? Is it the same, or is it... Um... It was Wednesday morning in in um, in the in Barry. No, it's it's just it's just an actual live class. There's there's nothing. There's, there's going to be it's just going to be as it is. Fine. In which case, in which case, I'll see Nutty you Thursday morning. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll see you I'll see you Thursday morning. You can be with the creme de la creme on Thursday morning, Steve. What you mean? I mean dialing from home. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, dialing from home on a Thursday morning. You're with the crack act. <laughs> That's fair you're, enough. You're, you're, you're with the cracker. Um, so, and Anne, hopefully I'll see you um, on... And, and Bill, if you wanted to join us Tuesday evening, you're welcome at 7.30. If not, I will, I will see you soon. Um, okay. So if, if, there, if there's no other questions, right, I'm, I'm going to call it a day. Okay, um, So anyone can have a chat. Yeah, Anne, thank Bill, you very much. Thank Roger you. and Steve, my yes, pleasure. I'll see you next Bye. week. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Bill. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye, then. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, Steve. Cheers. Right. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. Um, hey, guess what? Um, I use Google. I use Google Images today. And apparently, if you use Google Images, you're not a real archaeologist. Um, and it's quite amateur if using Google Images. So, uh, shame really that. Um, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, for my little stalker out there from Cardiff, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, um, and um, yeah, thank you very much.